You know, I want to encourage you, like my mother, to cultivate inwardly the heart and the mind of your loving Heavenly Father. And today's message is entitled, I Will Be a Father to You. And the real object of the message today, let's be like our Heavenly Father. You know, sometimes they say this, and it, they could say it to a son or a daughter, he's just like your dad. You're just like your father. You understand that? And while that sometimes is not a positive thing when it comes to our natural parents, it ought to be always when it comes to our Heavenly Father. And that, of course, is the wonder of Christianity, that you are given a new birth and that you're born again. You know, if you ever feel like you want to start life over again, the Bible talks about being renewed to the inward man daily and being transformed into his likeness by his spirit in us. And my mother, all I see in her is the nature and the life of my Heavenly Father. And it's not just there in a theological sense, it's there in life, in life. And you see in the Old Testament, it was just the theology but in the New Testament, it's the life. And that life is the life of our Father. And I want to talk to you about it today. And I'll read you this simple little verse here from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Now take that scripture for yourself. Take it. Go in prayer before God and say, Father, you said you would be my father. And I believe, I believe here I am your child. Amen? And I want to encourage you to meditate on this. And I want to give you just two little scriptures, one from Isaiah and one from Jeremiah, to show you something about your heavenly father. Listen to me, Isaiah 46, verse 3. Listen to me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, who have been upheld by me from birth, who have been carried from the womb, even to your old age, I am he, and even to gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made, and I will bear, even I will carry, and will deliver you. And this is something, oh, I could read you so many amazing scriptures. Hosea chapter 11, Isaiah 63 verse 9, so many, many, many scriptures throughout the Bible where you see the loving, faithful heart of your father. Children don't always act like children, but the father is always the father. And we should have that kind of heart about us. All of us carry the heart of our loving Heavenly Father. All of us carry His nature within us. And that people may wonder sometimes, like I sure did with my parents, how can they still love me? How can they still have faith for me? When I was in my discotheque days in 1975, 1974, yeah, those were the days, <laughs> you know. I was about as silly as they come, folks. I had this little motorbike souped up. I mean, the, the, it's, it's, a, it's 50 horsepower. Uh, it has a little bitty cylinder on it with a nine kilo, millimeter carburetor. And I filed out the cylinder and I put a 21 millimeter carburetor on there. And, and uh, everything else, I won't explain it all, but, but you could hear that motorbike coming five miles away. Wah! That's the sound it made, real loud. Wah! Seriously. And, and where we lived, right there, there were these houses that were five stories high on both sides, so the sound was kept in between the houses. So everybody knew us coming home. Wah! And then they could hear me go on the brakes, 
because it was a way too small of a bike to go that fast. So it would take me about a half a mile to stop. <laughs> no panic. There was never any danger, at least not to me. So anyway, and I'd come home, you know, and I woke up the whole neighborhood. And then I would stand and look through the window to see if anything was moving in the shadow. And I'd take my shoes off and tip top, tiptoe upstairs because I didn't want to wake my dad to let him know I got home at four in the morning, on Sunday morning. I mean, how dumb can you be? You woke up the whole neighborhood and you tipped up, tiptoe up the stairs on your socks. And my father had been waiting for me all this time to come up the stairs. And here's the stair, there's the long stairs, short stairs, and I go up to my bedroom and here's my father standing there. And as I come up the stairs, I see his belly sticking out. He said, oh, son, I'm in the kitchen. And he walks off. So what am I doing? I'm caught, you know. So I walk after him to the kitchen, and there's his Bible and his notes and his pen and everything and a cup of coffee at four in the morning. That's my dad, you know, so he could sleep better. Anyway, <laughs> and he's saying, oh, yeah, I was just going over my notes this morning. I was thinking to talk about this and talk about that. And, and without without making it obvious, he's preaching to me, you know. You understand, he's sowing some seeds, yeah, without making it obvious, you see. And then he says, oh, we better go to sleep before you know it. We gotta go to church. And he says, good night, son. And he walks off. And I stand there, my eyes bloodshot from the alcohol, my whole body smells of smoke. There was no hiding. I was the prodigal if you ever saw one. And I went upstairs and fell on my knees and cried out to Jesus because I experienced the love of my Father. Nothing converts the soul more than the love of the Father. Nothing will compel the heart more than the love of God. Nothing will motivate you more to do what's right in His sight because you don't want to grieve Him because his love is so phenomenal. And the Lord says here in Jeremiah 31, the Lord appeared of old saying to me, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you and I will build you and you shall be rebuilt. Again, the Lord appeared of old, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. You see, this is what the Heavenly Father wants you to know. More than anything on earth. More than all the gold and silver that is His, that He would be happy to give you. But He wants you to know this more than anything else that drawing of his love, that loving kindness by which he draws you. And come on, son. Come on, my daughter. Come on, my bosom is ready to embrace you with this love to take away your fears, to take away your doubts, to take away your questions, and to know I'm okay because God loves me. I tell you the truth. You could be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Virginia mentioned, in the middle of a fiery furnace. But if the Lord is with you, whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? And this is the great loving heart of our Father that He wants us to know. That He is faithful and He is true. I honestly, like John Triffitt was saying, absolutely stand amazed how faithful the Lord has been to me. And the older I become, the more I love depending on his love, relying on it, leaning on it, surrendering my whole self to it, trusting him to work in me, what only he can do by his grace and love. And Jesus said, and this is where we really come to the point of the message this morning, it's quite simple, just be like your father. Jesus said, if you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on you know him and have seen him. John 14, verse 7. 
And then in verse 10, he says, Do you not believe that I am in my Father and my Father is in me? The intimacy that your Father wants you to enjoy is more than your natural Father could ever give you. Your natural Father, praise God if He can be a real example of the Heavenly Father. But I look at Jesus and when he was but 12 years of age, he already knew the love of his heavenly father. He already said, don't you know I must be about my father's business? And I believe that our children should be raised in the knowledge of God as their father, and that we as natural parents only have them alone. They've only been entrusted to us to give them to him daily in the spirit in which we bear them, carry them, love them, support them, help them, and many times cry and pray. Cry and pray. Crying and praying will do a lot more than anger fits. And you, when you lay your frustrations on your children, that is not the best thing to do. But I understand it can happen. I understand it can happen. And maybe as parents you can say, oh my goodness, I'm making a mess of it. Or I've made a mess of it. You can fall on your knees and say, Father, have mercy, have mercy. You can recreate what I messed up. You can restore what I didn't do right. You can build. I tell you the truth, my mama does not boast in herself in who I am today. She does not look at herself and say, yeah, you're such an amazing son because I was such a perfect mom. No, she knows that I am what I am by His grace. And any true Christian parent will know that it is God who is the maker of us all. It is He who has made us and not we ourselves. And as parents, have this spirit of faith for your children. My daughter, our, our daughter, Mariah, she struggled ferociously as a young girl in school. I mean, she so had a hard time with it. She just got a first as a, as a midwife uh, uh, last week or the week before. She's delivering babies and complicated situations, uh, complicated births. And she's amazing. Now, if I would have looked at her when she was struggling in school and I would have listened to some ugly thought, oh, you'll never mount up to anything. God forbid that I would say such a thing. I always said to her, honey, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. And she knows it's the Lord that has enabled her to do all that she did. My sons didn't have the education to build houses or anything like that. They didn't go to school for it. They're building amazing houses. 19 at a, houses at a time, and they know all the stuff. I listen to them and it makes my head spin. And I'm happy I don't need to know it all because it's too much for my little brain. But they know it all. And Josh, he was telling me how he had this difficult situation because of the price issues within the economy at the moment. A lot of companies don't want to set the price because of inflation, right? So, but then you can't do a deal because you don't know if, you, if it's affordable or not. And the, he came up with this idea and the man agreed. I said, Josh, that was the Lord. He said, I know that. <laughs> How good it is when your heavenly father, like John was saying earlier, is allowed to help you in you as a parent, in you as a business person, or as just a school teacher, or just, 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 and just not as belittling, but whatever you may do. Believe that your Heavenly Father is interested in your welfare. Believe that your Heavenly Father wants to help you. Believe you are His child and represent Him. Jesus said, if you would have known me, you would have known my Father also. And maybe you say to me, Pastor Robert, I'm not a good representative of the Lord. If you knew some of the difficult children the Lord has, you would say, okay, God's amazing. Come on now. Hello. Have you ever met a 
church that doesn't have any dysfunction, in that case, it's very small. A clean stall is an empty stall, and there's no increase from an empty stall. Do you understand what that means? You find that in Proverbs. If you're going to have cows in the stall that produce nice milk for us to enjoy, there's going to be other stuff there as well. (laughs) Right? If you're going to have human beings, you're going to have human beings. Yes? And we can all be quite human sometimes. Hello. Anybody here ever been too human? And yet, because of Jesus and his precious blood, you're part of the family of God. And oh, I love that about my father. I love that about my father. Oh, how I love that about my father. How I love his love for precious people. And how I've seen his love for people that have struggled horrifically. We had a young man, he would come here, And he said, oh, Pastor Robert, my dad gets so angry with me. I said, why does he get angry with you, son? He said, well, Pastor, he said, I get so tormented with lust. And then I take take, uh, this heavy drug that you have to inject, uh, whatever it's called. And, And he said, and then I don't have the lust. And I can get close to God. And I try to tell that dad I do get close to God. But it makes him so angry that the only time I get close to God is when I'm high. And then I understand. I understand. We struggle with that. But I believe that God can meet people in the most horrific situation. Am I promoting to get high for you to get close to God? God forbid. Absolutely not. But I do know that God calls us out of horrible pits. And he says... I was troubled with my children when they were troubled. The trouble they felt, I felt. And today, this young man is free and is serving the Lord because he saw God love him while he was yet a sinner. And now he wants to tell everybody else that there's hope for them. I tell you, God's love is worth enjoying because it never fails. It is new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Say amen. And Jesus said in John 17, of uh, John, excuse me, John 20, verse 17, he says, I go, I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and to your God. Oh, my goodness. I could just imagine the joy of the Lord Jesus that now the love that he had enjoyed with the Heavenly Father they would be able to enjoy it directly, directly, directly. That is the awesomeness of the new covenant where before the only way to get close to God at all was through some priest. But now we come direct into his heart, into his spirit, and his spirit comes directly into us. And the only thing that joins us together is the life giving spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by that spirit in us, we cry, Abba Abba, Father. Oh, what a good thing when you know God is your Father. God is your Father. And God loves me. And God is with me. And God never leaves me or nor forsakes me. That's why you have this teaching in the new covenant that we need to get familiar with as if it's our daily bread, folks that we can't live any other way. Where it says in Ephesians 4 verse 6, One God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. I believe this with all my heart. I believe this in all my heart. I find that more satisfying than me being some kind of whatever. I don't understand that mindset, that a minister would want to be superior to people. I don't understand that mindset. There is only one who is above us all. It's our Father and His Son, Lord Jesus Christ. But we're all brothers and sisters. We all share the same spirit. We all have the same Father. We all have the same faith. Don't ever think that I am something more than you. No, I'm just a vessel as you are, 
of sharing this wonderful life of our loving Heavenly Father. And so, listen to this. Listen to this. Be imitators of God in everything you do, for then you will represent your Father as His beloved sons and daughters, and continue to walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ. For he surrendered his life as a sacrifice for us. His great love for us was pleasing to God, like an aroma of adoration, a sweet healing fragrance. This is what Jesus said will identify us to the world. This, this will identify us. You can have amazing knowledge that makes people go, wow, how do you know all that? But if you don't have love, it doesn't represent God, even if that knowledge came from God. You can have incredible faith to move mountains. But if you don't have love, it doesn't represent God, even if that faith came from God. You can give your life as a sacrifice to be burned and boast in your self-sacrifice. But if you don't have love, it doesn't represent God. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. And in this union, in the Father's love, we are being perfected to be like him. And in this, his love has been perfected in us that when we see him there's nothing in us that draws back when you see him you light up and you draw near with boldness oh how the heavenly father longs for that kind of love in you he longs for you to love him we love him because he loved us first how can I find this love, Pastor? Well, what do I got to do? John 15, verse 9. Come and abide in the Father's love with me. Because as the Father loves me, I love you. Come and abide in the Father's love. It's through your relationship with Jesus. Daily. Do you ever feel you're falling short when it comes to loving those that are right there? And you can really make a mess of it by becoming prickly, irritable, agitated, yeah? And there's no cushion left, no cushion. No matter what they do, bop, it hits right away. And you're like this. What's the answer for that? Correct them, correct them, correct them until you drive them crazy, until you destroy your own home until everybody looks at you and is embarrassed because you're so harsh and critical and misrepresent the church. You go to church, oh, I'd never go to their church. That person, I've seen that person be so harsh and cruel. You see, do you know that? That you represent the church, I represent the church. So what do I do, Pastor, when I'm like that? You need to spend some time with Jesus. You need to come into prayer and say, Oh, Jesus, Jesus, I've become so empty, so barren. There's no fruit, but you said if I abide in you and let your word abide in my heart, the fruit would come. The fruit would come. I need the fruit of your love. Oh, Jesus, help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, I'm excusing myself by accusing. I've really gotten into a mess, Lord, help me. I'm so dry and empty of your love. Oh, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, help me, Jesus, Jesus, help me. Your love never fails. It's always more than enough. Help me to not be wanting and needing and to be so unkind. I want to be like you. I want to be like our Heavenly Father. I want to imitate God as a beloved son and daughter. Oh, Lord, help me, I surrender. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Come lift your hands. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. 
Fill me with this love, Lord Jesus. Fill me with this love, Lord Jesus, of the Father. Oh, Jesus, fill me with this love, Lord Jesus. Heal my heart, soften it again. Fill me with your kindness and forbearance and goodness. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Let's all stand together. It's simple, isn't it? You just got to come back to where love comes from. It comes from Jesus. And you got to go there every day. And I'll tell you the truth. There will always be more love and more love until you become a body holy filled and flooded with that love and it begins to flow out of you like a river and it begins to heal and restore and rebuild and that's how God does it. That's how God does it. God demonstrating his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. No greater love as any man than to lay down his life for another. And God wants you to be able to know that kind of power of love that that it's your joy every day to lay down your life in sweet, self-sacrificial service, kindness, benevolence, unconquerable goodwill. And that you enjoy this. Oh, and that you feel so satisfied in this love that flows from your heart. By this the world will know, Jesus said, that you're my disciples. Amen. And when you struggle to let go of something uh, oh, I, I've been there, folks. I've been there. And you, and you just, you're stuck, you know. And you're stuck and it keeps rehearsing and you can't get rid of it. You need to say, oh Lord, I've allowed myself to get offended and upset. Cleanse my heart, Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Wash me white as snow. Fill me with your love. I release them and I ask you for your grace on them and for your blessing. And when you begin to pray for them what you need, it f comes through you and the miracle begins to happen. Honestly. So, come on. If you need Jesus to come into your life right now with fresh outpour of love, put your hand on your heart. Pray this simple prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of all my sins. Forgive me, Lord. Cleanse my heart. Wash it white as snow and fill me with your love. I'm yours, Jesus. And I pray, Father, that all of us as your church, as your congregation, are like you, that everybody can see we are your children and you are our Father. And as Jesus would say, let your light so shine that all men may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. And I thank you, Father, from this day we will see greater miracles than ever before in our lives and homes and family. And the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you. And all of you fathers here today and grandfathers, the Lord pour out his great love into your heart for your spouse, for your children, for your grandchildren, and cause you to be an amazing representative of his love. And the Lord give this to each and every one of us, male or female, because God is a Father for us all and in us all and through us all. In Jesus' name, and everybody says, Amen. I love you. Have a wonderful Father's Day, and thank you for coming. And if you can, come and join me this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And also, you can go online and watch the daily devotions and be sure to share them with others. Hey, Have a good day, everybody.